Barcelona for Mobile World Congress 2019. We're here in front of the Amdocs stand. I'm here with Yogan Patel from Amdocs. Yogan, good to meet you. Thank you, nice to meet you as well. So just tell us a little bit about your role, your job. What do you do at Amdocs? So I'm the head of marketing for Amdocs Open Network, which is a division of Amdocs that focuses on providing network solutions and services to service providers worldwide. So Mobile World Congress, you could almost call it the 5G show in many ways. Uh, 5G is everywhere. How do you see 5G in different to other generational changes that we've seen in the in the mobile industry in the past? Okay, so when you think about the, the different phases of evolution of mobile technology, the first phase was around unlimited voice, and then SMS came along, and then data came along. There's one common factor in all of those transformations. It was mainly around more capacity and more volume. 5G is going to change it a little bit. It's not that 5G is not going to be around more capacity and speed, but there's one key differentiator, which is 5G is going to introduce this notion of quality of service, which means that it's not just about capacity, but it's also around the quality of the service delivered because of the nature of 5G. And so this is going to open up many more new opportunities for service providers because now you can have services that are going to get differentiated based on the quality of service that the service product can deliver and guarantee on their network. Okay, so what do you see as some of the, the first use cases for 5G from the service provider perspective? So, you know, there are the obvious ones around enhanced mobile broadband, where in areas where there's capacity constraints that obviously can use 5G to extend that, fixed wireless access is another one, which will be, uh, which will be relevant. The, the, the more interesting ones will be around where you can deliver new services in a localized manner. So let's think about sports situations where you can deploy 5G infrastructure around sports arenas to deliver you know, virtual reality, augmented reality experience alongside the sporting event. Uh, factory automation, where there may be certain industries that might benefit from 5G again within a localized environment. So the first use cases will be ones where you don't have to necessarily blanket the network, but ones where you can localize the build out and do you know, 5G in a more pragmatic way for a specific use case and over time extend that across the entire network. Okay. So there's a lot of talk about the, the use cases and potential of 5G, but this is not going to be easy for the service providers. They have many challenges to face. What, what do you see as the key challenges for the service providers as they transition towards 5G? Yeah, I think so the challenges fall into two buckets. The first is building out the infrastructure, the densification of the network, right? So you're going to have to deploy many more components to the network. You're going to have to do that much more quickly and cost effectively than you've done it before, right? You cannot go build out integrate, accept, you know, optimize your networks with existing methods and procedures because you have so much more infrastructure you need to put out there. So that's one class of challenge. The second class of challenge is around running and operating a smarter network. When you think about 5G, there's going to be virtualization in the mix, there's going to be disaggregated and distributed components in the mix. You know, the operation, the assurance around all of that is not going to be able to work in the traditional mode. You're not going to be able to hire tens of thousands of more personnel to manage that network. So, a significant amount of automation is going to have to make its way into the equation yeah. as well. So I view those two being the big challenges. How do you simplify and speed up deployment, and how do you automate the operation going forward? Okay. So Amdocs has obviously been working on a lot of these areas for some time, and, and you've just announced and, and launched an Open 5G. Can you tell us uh, what that is and, and how it's relevant to uh, the that journey of the CSPs towards 5G? So yeah, so Open 5G is a collection of capabilities that falls into three areas. So the first part we call 5G fast is around solutions and services to s solve that first challenge, which is deployment of networks. Okay. So we have automation tools and software and services that allow service providers to integrate and commission their networks much more rapidly, complete the acceptance, and do the optimization. So for example, we are involved in a project in North America for MIMO optimization already for a 5G build out. So 5G fast is all around solutions that can speed up network deployment, acceptance, and optimization. The second area we call 5G smart is around providing better tools and capabilities to run a smart operation. So there we have solutions for slice management. We have solutions for NFV and edge orchestration. We have solutions for autonomous operations. We can do closed loop assurance based on AI and intelligence applied to the situation. And the third bucket we call 5G monetize is all around our capabilities for monetization. And this is really built on our traditional heritage as a BSS provider. So catalog capabilities, charging capabilities, digital experience capabilities. So 5G fast, smart, and 5G monetize 
are the three capability areas. The main thing is that underlying all of this is what we call open. And what I mean by open, open systems, open APIs, open standards, modular technology, because at the end of the day, when you think about 5G, it's not going to be a monolithic, proprietary network build-out. It's going to be a disaggregated, distributed, modular set of capabilities, and Amdocs brings the openness to the equation with all the capabilities that we have within our ecosystem. Right, and this provides a lot more, I guess, future flexibility for the operators to be able to go in the direction they need to. That's exactly it, because there's this big debate about, you know, are operators going to be able to build out end-to-end -end use cases first, or do they need to take a platform approach? It has to be a bit of both, right? Clearly, you're going to have to have some initial use cases you justify the investment for, but you're not going to build out the entire network capability optimized to that use case. You're going to build out a platform. And on that platform, you're going to have to evolve and adjust as new use cases come online or new use cases get validated as being something you can monetize and make money on. Excellent. Well, it sounds like you're covering a lot of the bases there. And we're just at the beginning of the, the 5G journey. So look forward to see how this uh, develops and, and maybe catch up next year and get an update. Sounds good. Again. Thank you very much. Thank you.